गाइस वेलकम टू द डेड हॉर्स पॉडकास्ट इट्स आवर अटेम्प्ट टू कैश इन ऑन द इंडी गेमिंग पॉडकास्ट बैंडवैगन इफ देयर इज सच अ बैंडवैगन विद मी आर माय को-होस्ट्स अरविंद हाय एंड अश्विन हे दे जस्ट इज सिटिंग आउट दिस वीक सो लेट्स लेट्स गेट टू इट सो अरविंद व्हाट व्हाट गेम्स हैव यू बीन प्लेइंग दिस वीक Uh, I've been playing a bit of Mark of the Ninja on New Game Plus, and I finished L.A. Noir, which is a detective slash open world game made by Rockstar. Uh, and Team Bondi, which now no longer exists, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were making. It's, it's funny how it's funny how you usually forget like Team Bondi's role in it. Like it's usually <laughs> made by Rockstar, that yeah. kind of thing. But yeah. So what do you think of Eleanor? I finished that. I played that whole game through in black and white. Did you play it in black and white or did you? Uh, uh no, like I like I I did not actually enjoy playing it in black and white. I tried it but like it but your eyes. I I like the detective part and the action part usually ended up with me running into gunfire so I could quickly die three times in order to engage the skip action button. Like that's yeah. how I played uh the entirety of uh the entirety of the cases after the traffic death oh, okay. i was just so sick of the action i used to skip driving to the to the locations and i used to skip the action i i just i was just in it for the interrogation and for the uh, detect the investigation part basically you wanted to yell at people that they were lying yeah exactly like that <laughs> that was pretty engaging like as long as you get, like get it correct and don't test the limits of the uh, conversation system too much Like I think it's actually, it was it was actually pretty neat, and I think if they had focused on that part a bit more, like made it maybe a Telltale style uh, adventure game where you just move from location to location without the open world stuff in between, that would have been way more engaging. Like at least for me, I think. First one constraint of any adventure game, like it's a very really, it's a very constrained system, isn't it? Any adventure yeah, game. Yeah, it is. It is. Anyway, Arvind. Yeah. Uh, What about Mark of the Ninja? What do you think of that? Yeah, I think it's a pretty exceptional stealth game. Like it, it is basically uh, a perfection of the Arkham Asylum style uh, stealth dynamic, where you are su- like the supreme uh, power in the level when you are in hiding, and as soon as you are actually exposed to the enemies, you suddenly go to the bottom of the food chain. You so become very brutal. Yeah, like, and in New Game Plus, I think you die with with a single bullet, so it is pretty much uh, a case of not like being in uh, like my favorite powers that you choose, the equipment rather is the Path of the Hunter, because that does away with the QTEs when you have to kill uh, kill guards. So that makes it like I like the Path of the Hunter because it makes it a really fluid experience. I just tap the guy on the back and he's dead, and then I hide. and then the other guy shows up so yeah i think like path of the hunter new game plus that's the way to play mark of the ninja for me uh, i played mark of the ninja in one go i played that full entire game in one sitting it's an exceptionally well designed game it's a fun experience yeah yeah and like i was i was impressed with the art style as well like yeah like every pretty much every part of the game like is perfect so so yeah Yeah, it's uh, hard to find flaws in that game. Um, yeah, Ashwin, what games have you been playing this week? Oh well, I've been in the thrall of the Darkness Two for a while now. Okay, tell us some something about it. Well, uh, I'll tell you two things about it. You can quad wield, not just dual wield, and you can deploy black holes. What more do you want from a game? <laughs> I was actually I initially dismissed this game as just another run of the mill shooter but then I read a good review by Tom Chick he gave it 5 stars this is the same man who ripped apart DS and other games so I thought there might be something to this game and I checked it out I found it very immersive it's got uh, probably the best gangster feel after mafia oh wow uh, yeah it's, it's that but it's really well done the uh, humor is good the The story, the writing, they're all pretty good. The only complaint I've had so far is that the bosses are kind of mediocre, and um, the, the what do you say? The, the 
it's kind of repetitious, uh, repetitive in the fa- in that you know the cycle that many games get into. The hero uh, get, is caught, then he then he escapes, then he gets caught again, then he escapes. You know how games do that many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this gets stuck in a rut like that. So other than that, I think uh, good right. fun experience. What on average, like what what are the encounters in that game like? Like I mean, what how is it different from say something like uh, you know Doom Three if you played that? Well, they have made a really clever use of the core mechanic, which is that the hero cannot survive in light. Okay. Either you can shoot out lights, or you will have to stay in the darkness and fire. The moment you step into light, you're blinded. Oh, okay. So that is the mechanic. And after playing this for a couple of weeks, just before going to bed, I kept staring at my tube light in front of me. <laughs> that, that sounds very yeah. tricky. So, I mean, I assume encounters kind of take the way of, if, if your enemy, enemies are illuminated and you eventually, like, do you have to shoot out the lights where your enemies are standing so that you can see them more clearly? How does that work? No, you cannot be in light. Okay. So the, person, yeah, the moment the player steps into light, he's blinded. All right. This is actually quite interesting because I like it's almost like a literal uh, like taken the mechanic from like Thief with the visibility gem and Mark of the Ninja taken to a literal extreme, as in you literally cannot see anything in the light. Like in, in right. usually in, in Thief and Mark of the Ninja, you cannot do anything useful in like in the light. But in here, it's it seems like it's taken to like quite an extreme where you act you are actually blinded. You're so blinded, sorry? and you lose the darkness powers, which means you can only shoot using your guns, and uh, and your enemies use light to kill you. Like they have searchlights and they have flash flashbang grenades. That's how they come to you. Oh wow, that's. Yeah, it sounds really cool. Yeah, uh, it's, it's really fun when you first step into a garage and the enemies turn all the car headlights as weapons against you. <laughs> sounds, yeah, I, I've got to check this out. I have it in my Steam library. I've just never installed it. Go for it. <laughs> uh, what's, what does quad wielding feel like, by the way? It must feel really satisfying to just... Yeah, the, the thing is, I'm kind of curious. I've been playing with a controller on a PS3. I've been wa- wondering how it would feel on a PC with keyboard because yeah. the, the controller is quite satisfying. They've cleverly mapped the uh, attacks to each of the buttons. Yeah, I can see like the two it's, triggers and the two shoulder buttons, I guess. Yeah. That right. would. And yeah, then on PC, right. I guess, yeah, they would uh, do it with Q and E. Like the tentacles might be Q and E. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, and maybe R, I guess. But the thing there is, uh, Q and D, even though they are slightly left and right, the left and right shoulder buttons are a really natural mapping to what you feel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that 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 is definitely a Q and D still requires some kind of finger gymnastics on a keyboard. Right, right. Yeah. And this is your dog action all the time. You're using your tentacles all the time. That's how you get. So, so what you would do is. You would just rip up, rip out uh, the ventilator fan from a shaft and hurl it at your enemy. They, it'll slice the enemy into two. Oh, wow. Well, so the environment, there are a lot of things in the environment that you can pick up and throw at enemies. Yes. Oh, and I forgot one thing. This game has the best companion that I've ever had in a game. Seriously. This <laughs> thing is called a, a Darkling, who always sticks with you. And he's. Uh, I think. Yeah, these are the uh, ones, the, the enemies that the, the zero punctuation M's are inspired by, right? At the M's? Not sure. Like they were in the original darkness, at least. Okay, okay. So this guy is dressed in a Union Jack. And... Oh, right, okay. Oh, so that's completely yeah. different. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy and excellent voice acting. And you can grab him and throw him at people. And he'll cling on and start ripping them apart. It's oh, crazy. That, wow. That's okay. Yeah. That sounds insane. It sounds like a like one of those. It sounds like a cannibal leprechaun you hurl at people. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, the leprechaun is the best description I can think of. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. A leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> leprechaun yeah. It's basically a, a leprechaun cannibal that you throw at people that eats them. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and the Same. black hole. Don't forget the black I hole. I install this game now. Enemies, yeah, enemies die. They they leave behind small black holes. You pick them up. 
amplify them with the darkness and throw them and it will suck all enemies nearby and eat them up. Sweet. I, like, I think, yeah, this sounds like one of those shooters you have to play just because the encounters in it are so well designed that, like, there's so much fun to play. Yeah, and I think that's partly why I felt a little let down by the bosses. They okay. don't really live up to the rest of the encounters. Yeah. Uh, that's been the bane of first-person shooters for how many years now? Bad bosses. Right. Yeah. yeah, just think of Bioshock and it's... Oh, God. I think Doom had good bosses, but, like, but then, like, Doom had, like, a lot of stuff that like isn't really in like modern shooters so yeah yeah, yeah that was stage shooting at that point right? there's nothing complicated yeah. about simple times no but I, I still think that like uh like um, like doom's bosses actually felt like bosses like, you know like you you needed a bit of that uh, like that bit extra skill and such yeah i think the f- fun bosses i've played against in fps's have been things like serious sam because just because of the scale of the environment and like the hum- amount of mobility that you and the boss both have, it's a lot of fun to fight against those kind of bosses. Going in another direction, I can recollect Half Life's bosses, which kind of kind of made yeah. you feel there was no skill involved. You just had to do a series of steps because you knew you could not defeat them in a fair firefight. <laughs> That's the thing after death, right? You could never destroy the tentacles with the guns. The only thing is find a really powerful weapon and switch it on. And that is kind of cool how they did it. Yeah, that that works too. Like it's a it's a great moment of empowerment for the player, right? Yes. You find you find this awesome thing, and now okay, now you can take take on the boss. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they, they I remember they had this idea of a chopper pursuing the player all through an entire level. They would feel completely powerless till they got the RPG, and then they would just blast the hell out of it and feel good, good about it. Yeah. I speaking of speaking of feeling good, I've, the game I've played most this week by far. I've been playing Spelunky all week, and I finally got to the jungle level. Arvind was there. Arvind can attest to the fact that I got to the jungle level. I, I finished the jungle level and got to the ice level. He was yeah, there. Okay. <laughs> Are these legendarily difficult levels? Uh, Spelunky. See, okay, the thing with Spelunky is it's it's exceedingly difficult, mm-hmm. and getting there are there are <coughs> each area there are like uh, four areas: are uh, cave, jungle, ice, and temple. And Ashwin, you'll know this. Like, it sets off the same part of your head that that's attracted to play a game like Super Meat Boy. <laughs> Tell me about it, yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's kind of like a roguelike wherein you die and then you start from the beginning of the game again, right? Every time you go back to the beginning. The and beginning uh, oh, you're yeah. basically r- r- like running down this cave and uh, collecting stuff that you need to survive inside it. It's a very, very simple premise, but it's executed so well. And each time a section changes, when you go from like the cave section to the jungle section, for example the monsters change. So your behavior pattern has to, like, your the, everything you've learned just flips on, a, like, it flips completely. They've designed that game, it's it's a completely system-driven game because levels are randomly generated. You don't go through the same level twice ever. Oh. So, you, like, it, it's, it's, a, it's a joy to play. I'm really digging Spelunky right now. So is, is it, uh, so is it just, just is it an endless game? It's not endless. There are, oh, there are like each section has four levels. So okay, the, and it has a definite ending, like yeah, yeah, yeah. You finish okay. the temple level and like that's that's the end of the game. But there are hidden levels supposedly where the real ending is there. And or let me just get past the ice caves now. I, I've I've got gotten through the ice caves into the temple levels twice. Mm-hmm. I need to do it one more time, and then I can just work on getting through the temple levels. You know what this reminds me of? More than Super Meat Boy, I am reminded of uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Oh, no, I, yeah, it's actually a part, partly a roguelike, I guess, in a way. Uh, I mean, like, Spelunky is the kind of game that I can, like, appreciate the design of, but not really play a lot because, like, I'm the kind of your know, story slash lore kind of guy. Yeah, what's interesting about it is, like, the daily challenge stuff, which I find very, intri- like, the 
the part like it's in i think it's in another game as well called race the sun the same daily challenge uh, kind of uh, format yes. where you like where you have a single level for 24 hours and everyone tries to uh, like get the maximum score and you can only play once yeah okay so i think that that completely like that that also like slightly changes the uh, the usual dynamic of spelunky where like suddenly your failures matter a lot like since it's basically kind of a way of adding permadeath to a roguelike like i mean roguelikes already have permadeath but like uh, this has a little more consequence than that because you are stuck yeah. for 24 hours uh, once you die so so yeah it's mm-hmm. it's an interesting dynamic like do you just play it very early to get to the like to get a high to get to like a higher spot in the leaderboards or do you wait to see like where like there are a bunch of videos for this like every day people uh, upload their daily challenge progress so you can actually like look yeah. at the layout of the level from there are the people who do specific daily challenge speed runs like they run through yeah. the entire game in the daily challenge uh, the le- this level of skill on display in spelunky is just it's insane i like I, i i knew i was bad at games i just didn't know i was this bad until i started watching people play this <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah basically watching game footage on uh, youtube is a very humbling experience but don't read the comments like yeah, <laughs> no never ever read the comments <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i uh, like ashwin yeah check out uh, check out uh, spelunky i think you'll like it and should also check out rogue legacy i you like that too all right moving on from the the games we played down to news arvin you got any news for us uh yeah so there's this new thief game that's out that's actually like uh faithful to the spirit of the series oh you mean the one being made by idus montreal no i mean the other one that's the dark mod it's stand alone now so it's basically a new game all right but is <laughs> it is i don't montreal making a new game called thief yeah yeah no, i i prefer to uh, like forget about that like not think about it too much it's, it's becoming deus ex invisible war in your head isn't it <laughs> <laughs> no i mean i wish it was deus ex invisible war because at least uh, no, like you could sort of uh, like understand how like why the things that were cut were being cut like at that time uh, de- the original deus ex was on pc and then suddenly they had to move to the original xbox which i think had about uh, like 2 bytes of ram or something so they had to like scale down the levels to uh, like a very smaller size and all this the yeah. stuff was basically dumbed down but but in th- but in this new thief i i just don't understand why they are doing this but anyway like if forget new thief like don't buy it instead play the dark mode let's talk which about is, the real thief the dark mode yeah which is a uh, thief implemented in the doom 3 engine and what this basically means is that, is that a like uh, do the doom 3 engine is still uh, like uh, relatively easier to make levels in as far as i know and at the same time like it can run on pretty much anything right now and the lighting is pretty good because lighting plays a like great role in like how you approach the levels of thief yeah and and like it also so yeah that's that's the and apart from that from what i've played so far it features some really awesome level design yeah i think so like it does there's, so there's literally no reason to not play the dark mode ashwin go ahead uh, is is this a remake of the original thief or one of its sequels thief so i think it's a fan based mod Okay, it's not a port then. Like they did not remake. No, no, no. They don't think no, they have permission to do that. Yeah, I don't okay. think. Yeah, especially Just, since now, uh, like the the original Thief games are also available on Steam and yeah. GOG. Yeah, I don't think these guys have permission to do that. I think but, they have taken, yeah. but the levels are more or less like the same. Yeah, they are pretty similar. Yeah, I mean, like you have the usual kind of uh, ca- castle, cathedral kind of dynamic. and as far as i know the guards are pretty much the same like brain dead kind of people guys <laughs> guys that were in the original thief yeah <laughs> so like speaking of games like thief like th- 3d not third person but first person stealth is consider <laughs> i'm working on a first person stealth game right now uh 
it's called graveyard of thieves but like first person stealth like uh, uh, let's arvind why do you think the first person stealth in the dark mods intrigues you more than what you've seen of the thief idus montreal game so far now i think the main reason is like allowing players uh, like freedom to actually uh, like for example a, a single change of allowing the players to have a rope arrow at any point at most points in the level like that that is a mind like that might look at uh, as a minor change but that completely changes the dynamic of uh, your thief level because suddenly you have uh, because there suddenly there's verticality but the verticality is also a resource that you have because you don't have unlimited rope arrows yeah yeah i definitely And, think like the the ability to explore a level from like you know every vantage point possible like definitely it's kind of it's a must for first person stealth games because it's not like a third person game where you have like a view of where your character is in relation to the world it's not as cut and dried as that so the yeah, ability to yeah. explore your your surroundings is is key the idus montreal game like you can climb up pretty much everything everything anything and they're trying to make the environments uh, like yeah another reason actually is that i don't like the kind of uh, the ability that's basically blink but they don't call it blink they call it something else <laughs> like that has no place in a thief game like i, I mean obviously i haven't played the game yet and it might turn out to be good uh, so i'm not say i'm not completely discounting thief but at they the did make time, a good like, dsx game Yeah, yeah, they did make a really, uh, yeah, they made they did make a good Deus Ex game, not as good as the original, but then like nothing is as good as the original. You so. had to say, like, you had to let like, doff your cap to War Inspector just once. Yeah, so that that's how it works. Like that's how game and the game industry works. You you like you enter into conversation. You the code word is Deus Ex is the best game ever made, and then you <laughs> go on from there. Like. Uh, Ashwin, like, what, uh, like, what do you think about, like, have, uh, have you played like either the Thieves or the Dark Mod, or you have, do you have any opinions about New Thief that kind of thing? Uh, well, Thieves is one series I've never got to play, but I have played Dishonored, which a lot of people tell me is uh, spiritually similar to what Thief was. Yeah, somewhat. Yeah. Yes, somewhat. Yeah, in some senses, yeah. But uh, di- what Dishonored does is that it. uh makes you uh very competent in combat and it gives you a lot of combat related abilities whereas mm-hmm. thief was all about the non combat abilities like for example a water arrow isn't necessarily any better in combat than a normal arrow but like i would rather die than fire a water arrow in combat because i know that that arrow is like very useful precious resource yeah it's a precious resource and i don't want to uh like spend it fighting guards or whatever Yeah. So, so yeah, I think what do you think of Dishonored, Ashwin? I never entered combat in Dishonored. Oh wow! Yeah, I I can't think of any instance where I actually entered combat. And in that way, I think they did a neat thing by giving you the option of going the thief way or the I don't know guns blazing. Uh, yeah. yeah, but at the same time, I think uh, Dishonored stealth is actually a lot easier because verticality does not have any cost associated with it. Like, uh, like when you are, uh, because like your mana recharges when you use blink. Like, if you only if you pause for a couple of seconds after blinking once, uh, your mana can re it can regen, and then you can use blink again. So it's basically free. Like yes. if you use it, yeah. So that. Yeah, so that kind of uh, I I feel changes the dynamic because suddenly instead of looking at the level from inside a dumpster or from hiding behind a uh, like a, a a fence or a ledge or something, you're suddenly looking at the level from above at all times, either from a rooftop or from a like a lamp post from a top of the lamp post, and I think that really changes the dynamic because suddenly uh, you have absolute power over uh, like the level, and I think that is something that you. almost never had in thief unless you uh, like played a level for uh, like basically perf- you had to perfect the level in order to have power over it i see i see your point uh, i think i caught i at least subconsciously got to the strategy after a couple of levels in dishonored i was always trying to reach high ground and yeah. so then <laughs> yeah yeah yep yeah. it's the same yeah. with me yeah it becomes a dominant strategy very very quickly in, in dishonored to get to high ground survey like like look down on the rest of the 
models on the ground and then figure out your fastest route through the level. Yep. But it's a lot of fun to do that. Like, I mean, like you feel like a badass in that game. I think that's the distinction yeah, I'm definitely. talking about. Yeah. You feel yeah, like a exactly. badass in Dishonored. You feel like you're at the mercy or you're the opposite of a badass in Thief. Yeah, you feel like you are a thief, basically. And like huh. getting caught is like a bad thing. <laughs> Whereas in Dishonored, like for example... Uh, like well, you're not a thief in Dishonored, couple... you're an assassin. So you should feel... Yeah, yeah that's a yeah that's a good point actually like and i don't fault them for that like not every game has to be thief like exactly like thief unless they're called thief in which case they better be like thief but <laughs> like dishonored is a really fun game to play and like even the combat abilities are quite fun like i usually never use them but what i ended up doing after a couple of levels and i when i had stockpiled a lot of combat upgrades because there were no other uh, things to spend it on was that I would just jump into combat and then once everyone was dead I would uh, reload and then be back on my thing and then continue <laughs> with my non-lethal play- playthrough oh, <laughs> yeah so that was really fun like Dishonored is a really great game I think Knife of uh, oh, sorry Knife of Gunwall yeah. Yeah. yeah that that actually is let's go more into the kind of thief Stealth. route but not too much here yeah. Yeah, I mean, to an extent. I mean, you're playing a master assassin in that as well, so you yeah. can't be like you can't feel super vulnerable. Uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, Ashwin, you have anything to add? Yeah, I think uh, I have a confession to make. In sure. I think I have parts of Hitman too. I played in first person mode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, right. So actually, I did not know you could play Thief. Uh, sorry, Hitman 2 in uh, a sa- like first person mode. Like, I'm not even sure how that would work. <laughs> but yeah, I think I I can't. It, it's been a while, but I think you could. Yeah, I remember playing the Hitman 2 had that Punjab level, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a cult. Yes, where you had to uh, kill a surgeon or somebody, a doctor. You had to kill. Yes. Yeah, I think I played that level in first person mode. It was weird. It was really weird. The game was not designed for that. No, it's absolutely not designed for first person. Hitman is another great series of stealth games that recently decided to shit on itself by coming out with Absolution. <laughs> yeah, man. Like I, I was, I actually uh, got Absolution, uh, and I haven't touched it since playing like the first three or four levels. Same here. Because I, I finished the first level of Absolution and then I gave up on it. Yeah, I mean, because I was like, uh, what the hell am I playing? Uh, <laughs> it, it was like, it was stuck between Limbo as in, it, it couldn't decide whether it wanted to be a third person shooter uh, in or the a, style or of a like, Hitman game. Yeah, or a Hitman game. So like when a Hitman game isn't sure whether it wants to be a Hitman game, I'm not sure what, <laughs> like. It's time to get out of Dodge. Yeah. yeah. Did you check out Absolution? Oh, no, no. I couldn't check out Absolution. No. Oh, I think you guys put me off it. <laughs> <laughs> Everything yeah. about Absolution from you guys, I decided not to give it a go and break my heart. Yeah, so funnily enough, I don't know what's it with Square Enix and all their franchises suddenly having identity crisis. Like, Speaking Tomb of- Raider is stuck between uh, like the old like Tomb Raider, which, which was half uh, like sort of inventory puzzles kind of thing, and half uh, exploration with Great uh, exploration of a quasi open world, and now it's like uncharted in, in terms of mechanics, at least. Yeah. Oh, also, speaking of Square Enix, uh, they announced uh, well, the, the they published a game called Sleeping Dogs, which I worked on. And uh, the developers of Sleeping Dogs have announced that they're making kind of a sequel to it called Triad Wars. So it's a new game set in that universe. So, yay! I hope, I, I hope United I actually... Games makes a really good game. Again, yeah, I actually hope. Like, I really, I really like Sleeping Dogs, and I, uh, it was one of the few games which I actually, uh, like, completed in a single go, as in not in a single setting. But I did not play any other game while I was in the middle yeah. of playing Sleeping Dogs. But yeah, like, I hope they don't actually like reuse the same characters and stuff because I think the story was, uh, like, I yeah, think it was so- concluded fairly well. Like, yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't really want to know what Wei Shen does next. Yeah. yeah, I think that, no, I think, that chapter. Is I think over. in the press release they said it's a, it's an it's in a it's in the Sleeping Dogs universe. So I think that it's probably not the same characters or anything like that. 
yeah all right last piece of news that we have is there are two kickstarter games that you guys should check out one is a uh, really really cool game by a small team in north vancouver called the long dark it's a survival game you play a pilot that has crashed in the middle of uh, like in the middle of this frozen wasteland and there's some kind of uh, like there's some kind of event because of which there's no power no electricity working anywhere and you have to explore through the cold and survive and there's a gameplay video up you guys should check it out it's really cool it's called the long dark uh, it's on kickstarter and uh, the other game which arvind and i checked out earlier this week is by is it's a phenomenon kind of it's by this guy called Cyril Megan it's a game called Universal Warfront and it's an RTS slash MOBA slash first person shooter all made by one guy and the quality of work on display is phenomenal yeah though i think yeah like he does need to work on like like picking up a kind of rememberable name and that kind of thing because i actually like f- failed to be- remember the name of this game at least three times while trying to tell yeah, same people universe of warfare is a things. hard to remember name yeah and and plus like it 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 falls into the kind of uh, land where like all of these phrases have been used in like at least five games before but uh, on a purely technical level it is a, a surprisingly great accomplishment though i am uh, though i have my reservations about like how balanced it would be how fun it would be to play that kind of things but yeah, yeah. on a purely technical level yeah, i think it's worth a go and like uh, i might like i might just pledge uh, like 10 or 20 bucks just like as a kind of doff of my hat to this just, guy. yeah the guy is the talent on display is pretty phenomenal lashwin yeah. you should check out the project have you seen this project on kickstarter i hadn't heard of this till you uh, uh, the okay. long dark is but not this one okay i think the long dark has phenomenal artwork from what i've seen oh yeah the art in long dark is amazing uh, yeah. it reminds me of this other thing that i saw today uh, you guys might know about planetary annihilation i think it's called yeah they were showcasing a feature that they had today it's called the chrono cam suppose you have two monitors and this being an rts game it's possible that one of your units went off and died somewhere for some reason so okay. on one monitor you can actually play back stuff in real time like you're playing the game on the other you can rewind your game and see what exactly happened to that scout yeah oh you mean uh, wait a minute what, what was the name of the game again was it called archon or something planetary Plan- annihilation annihilation Oh right, planetary annihilation. I did not know it had a rewind feature. Like, uh, is it like rewinding the actual game or just watching a replay? That kind of thing. Uh, I don't know how it impacts the the gameplay as in. Is it? I don't know if it. You mean can I go back in time and then spawn off a different timeline? Oh right, oh. so it's just like watching a replay of what happened. That kind of. Thing. Yeah. That is one thing that they oh, right. emphasized. But I don't know if we can actually have a causative effect on the future. I'm not sure. You should check out. It's called Chrono Cam. Chrono Cam. Sounds cool. Oh right. Yeah. Yeah. This this actually reminds me of a game called Archon. Like it it flew fairly under the radar because of certain like gameplay issues and such. But it had the three. It had this really cool time uh, traveling time RTS mechanic. Yeah. 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 yeah it was called a time traveling RT RTS. But basically, your ability to rewind time was a mechanic like a limited ability in itself. So it led to. Uh, a very like mind bending kind of scenario where all the teams were bending time according to like to to ensure the outcome that suited them the most okay but yeah like i could never understand like how to like properly play it like it, it's interesting as a concept because it's time travel done on a purely mechanical level as opposed to like usually in games time travel is like a plot element like in final fantasy 13 2 i think Yeah, so so it's 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 great because it's time travel implemented as a mechanic, as opposed to something that just happens in the plot. Well, I think the key differentiator here is just that the fact that from what you tell me, it sounds like you can have multiple timelines, or you can't. Yeah, you can have yes. a lot of like a multiple timeline. Basically, how it works is uh, that you can uh, rewind the timeline, but uh, there's this. Uh, but eventually uh, like as as things grow uh, go in the past your ability to rewind them uh, diminishes so so beyond a certain point you cannot really realistically rewind like you cannot like for example if you are down to your last soldier you cannot just go back to the point where everyone was building their bases and that kind of thing 
so the ability to rewind time is a limited thing in itself so you should so you need to know when to rewind time as well as like how much to rewind it that kind of thing that's interesting time is a resource huh Yeah. Well, back to Arvind's point about like time traveling not being a mechanic. The greatest game ever made, Chrono Trigger, doesn't have time traveling as a mechanic, but it's a whole game made about time travel. Can I, the JRPGs I, have a like JRPGs, I think, have a bunch of games about like time travel and plot at least, not in not mechanically, but in plot. Ashwin, you were saying? Oh no, no, I was just gonna say that I travel back in time and I knew that you were gonna say. <laughs> 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 oh man! I, I think you know that because of how many times I mentioned Chrono Trigger on a regular basis. Persuading me to play that for a long time now, and I've been putting it forever. You should play that game. It's amazing. Everyone should play Chrono Trigger at least once. Yeah, once I've played it. Uh, I lo- I lost interest at the part where you uh, go into some tribal village. I think I lost interest in what you were saying when you said you lost interest in Chrono Trigger. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's a great game. I like the I like the way the combat naturally just like obviously like it cannot naturally pop up since it's like a JRPG menu and such, but it 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 pops up straight in place. So I like that, and I and I really love the carnival sequence where where the game remembers what you did. I yeah. think that was amazing. Yeah, that was one of those uh, moments that that uh, that when I played it, it felt like it felt like would you kindly basically if you. The first time I play, like I saw Would You Kindly, that's what it felt like. I, I don't the think Ashwin's played Bioshock, so you should you should tread lightly there. Oh right, yeah. spoilers for the like five people who still haven't played Bioshock yet. <laughs> no, I know what Would You Kindly is. So. Okay, okay, yeah. that's good. But uh, see, I think they... this also reminds me of this really obscure Japanese game. Have you guys heard of Shadow of Memories? Nope, nope. Shadow this of is... Memories. Oh, it... Its other name is Shadow of Destiny. It's not okay. both. So this game is really weird in that it's it's completely time travel based. You got to prevent your own death by doing crazy stuff like you were sniped from a tree, a 500 year old tree. So you got to go back 500 years in time, prevent that tree from being planted. That, yeah, that and other crazy stuff. You got to. Wow. It's really obscure. Yeah, it's a really obscure. Yeah. Is it an adventure game? It's an adventure game, yeah. Okay, Shadow of Destiny. Shadow of Destiny okay. or Shadow of Memories, both names. Oh. All right, I gotta check this out. All right, I think that's that's it for for news. We have all right. Let's talk about what each of us is working on this week. Arvind, you go first. Right. So I've been working on uh, controller support for Unrest. And like it's it's really a pain. Like if you design a game for mouse and keyboard, uh, then suddenly uh, adding controller support to it is really a is really very painful because suddenly all all the, your carefully assigned menu orders become useless because the player can only manipulate one menu at a time. Yeah. So so that's a so it's not a tough challenge. It's it's just very annoying. Like especially like since uh, the the engine I'm using is uh, custom coded by me. So I have to like, so I have to like figure out all the like where which menu transfers control to which, and this is especially painful in the journal, where we have a first we have a quests and lore as two categories. Then like quests has four subcategories, lore has four subcategories. Then each of those has a bunch of entries. So it's basically a full fledged uh, you know the old school style RPG j- journal. Yeah. And. Yeah, to have that navigable, like I can see now why, uh, like for example, Wasteland 2 and like Project Eternity are saying that we don't want to uh, make this game for consoles, because it's really a pain in the ass. Because sud- because a controller is kind of a limited uh, thing to interact with, as opposed to a mouse. It it might actually work better in touch screens than in than with a controller. So yeah, uh, yeah. Gripes about controller support aside, I've also been working on a bunch of graphics code, which is like, <laughs> I don't know if it's in the uh, like scope of this podcast, but it's basically uh, uh, stripping out a bunch of OpenGL calls and replacing it with system dependent uh, direct input or OpenGL or OpenGL GL ES calls depending on platforms. 
so we can run on like anything from uh, like windows to linux to mac to ipad or, or to android or whatever so yeah up uh, yeah and also i've uh, uh, just finished wiring up chapter 2 in unrest which means the game is one thirds done basically hey that's awesome yeah i mean obviously uh, like once we actually uh, get to the part where it's like fully done we have to do an entire pass again and add a yeah. bunch of uh, side quests and pcs yeah hopefully you guys have a couple of, of months which is just polish time that would be awesome for yeah. you guys yeah that would be really appreciated because it's especially in an rpg where uh, content is kind of the reason the players play the game yeah so so more so if so most players are probably not going to uh, replay your game a second time yeah uh, like they might especially with the like with the devil like in a have, conversation based game they might play again just to see what, what taking a different branch does yeah. yeah especially since we are going uh, the wisher 2 route as in uh, a couple of decisions you make early in the game can dramatically alter what happens in the late game so i hope players do play it uh, like more than once but yeah that sounds uh, awesome yeah basically at first we are uh, like planning on getting the main quest done and being able to play the game for start to finish then go mm-hmm. back add a bunch of flavor quests npcs and the kickstarter backer stuff like a, like backers is npcs and that kind of thing cool sounds really yeah, cool that's so yeah that's pretty much what i have been working on this week it sounds awesome how oh, unrest is coming along yeah unrest is coming along really well man uh in my case i've been working on my stealth adventure game for this last week what i've been prototyping on last 3 4 days is basically uh two kinds of grenades one is a remote trigger grenade where you can just plant it and then press a button or like you know click your mouse and then the bomb goes off and the other is a flashbang and uh unreal can be a real pain when you want to create a custom flashbang it doesn't have a flashbang like there's no flashbang that that is in unreal you've got to create your own so attaching a dynamic point like a dynamic light emitter to like an effect that's happening has been a really painful process but i think like the last version of it that i had up and running was working so i'm i'm happy with it that's that that i i just hope like it doesn't glitch out magnificently in some way as these things are want to do the remote bomb trigger was pretty easy that's it's done those are the only like i'm the thing i'm kind of worried about from a player agency perspective is these are the only two things that the as tools that the player will have direct control over like these are the things that the player can use to get himself out of situations or like used to plan to take out enemies in the environment uh yeah that's about it that's what i've been working on last week bombs <laughs> that's cool It's a fun film. So, yeah, you you shouldn't have said the bo- like bombs because I was just about to uh, say that it sounds like the bomb. Yeah. All right. Uh, we we can't talk about what Ashwin's doing because uh, his project hasn't been announced yet. But uh, whenever it is announced, Ashwin will talk about it. I'm sure. Yes. Uh, if he wants to, <laughs> we don't like to force people to talk about things they don't want to talk. Yeah, about. we don't want to impose. <laughs> <laughs> Except on the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh all right guys that's it that's it for this week's cast we'll see you next week uh, this is uh, vivek arvind and ashwin signing out thank you yeah. for listening see you guys Cheers. bye guys I mean, and and then like it would have been really good if some, if one of you had said, "Oh my God, JC, a bomb," you know, because that would have been like the perfect ending for the podcast, and like we would ride into the sunset. That kind. Of... Yeah. We can also edit podcast. <laughs> <laughs>